What's going on everyone, Madala here, back with another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you've already been here before, welcome back, and I hope you all are having a fabulous day. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and opinions on the Destiny 2 story and PvE in general. Now, for starters, I want to start off with a quick note. I'm going to make sure that this review is as spoiler free as possible to respect those who haven't played the game yet and wish to play it. So if you're looking for a story review that doesn't have too many spoilers just to kind of inch your mind into buying the game a little more, I got you. There's already so many internet trolls out there who are spoiling the game for everyone and I don't want to be one of those people. So if you're on this video, don't worry, not going to spoil it. Most of the gameplay itself takes place on the EDZ and Titan which are the first er two areas of the game. Before the story even picks up so don't worry I got you. Now to start things off one of the first things that I look at when I play a story game are the visuals, the graphics, basically the amount of effort and creativity the game developers put in to generating the world around us and in this case the solar system around you. As a guardian you travel around to multiple areas that all look completely different from one another. You can tell that Bungie put so much effort into generating their different worlds even though some of them are from the previous game. The, the It's just the celestial bodies or whatever you call it. They all just look amazing. They're all different from one, other, one another. So Bungie put a lot of creativity into creating the world around us in Destiny 2. One thing that really catches my eye every single time are the gorgeous skyboxes. There are so many missions that I play in Destiny where I just pause for a couple minutes just staring at the skybox and just looking at how gorgeous there's like gorgeous the skyboxes are. It's just absolutely amazing. I've annoyed my friend a couple times. He got the game slightly after I did and I would just point out to him the amazing skyboxes that are going on while we're playing the mission and he's just trying to get the story over with but I just keep pointing out how amazing the game looks. But although he agrees with me, it does get kind of annoying how much I point it out. The game just looks absolutely gorgeous. Just everything, when you walk around, the textures look great, the lighting is amazing. And I'm running this on a plain old Xbox One. The game comes out on PC in a month. I'm excited to see how amazing it'll look on PC, because I know it'll look way better than the Xbox. But even though I'm running it on a plain old Xbox One, the game still looks so freaking amazing. Now the next thing that I look at is the music. Well, I don't really look at it, I listen to it. Music, to me, is something that's really going to add a sense of immersion into the game. And if a game developer has good artists making really nice music that fit each and every aspect of the game, you're going to accomplish such an immersive feeling when the player's playing the game. And that's what players want and enjoy at the end of the day. At least for me, when I play a story game, I want to be immersed into that story. And the music has a huge part in doing that. And Destiny doesn't really fall short on that. Destiny does a really good job with their music. The composers, if I knew your names, I totally say it right now, but sadly I don't, so I apologize. All you composers who put your who put effort and work and creativity into creating the soundtracks for Destiny 2, I applaud you guys because the music is absolutely amazing. It introduces a huge sense of immersion when I'm playing this game. I remember at one point I was just listening to some chill Destiny background music while I was just platforming around Titan, just jumping around to different ledges, trying to get through a mission. And out of nowhere, I go through this door. The entire game goes dark and then the music just goes silent. And I walk a couple of steps forward and out of nowhere, a freaking thrall just jumps out and a bunch of thralls jump out and the music gets super intense and everything goes to hell. And at that point, I was just so immersed into the game, I sat up, went straight into the monitor and just focused. And the music pretty much had a huge job at giving me that sense of immersion. And so Destiny, Bungie, the music composers, I commend you guys. You guys did an amazing job with the music. Now the next thing I look at is the story in general, how the story flows and the different characters in the story. Now, from what I heard about Destiny 1 since I haven't played the first Destiny, a lot of people didn't really like the story because it didn't really have much going for it, but playing Destiny 2, I can probably assure you that it's a way better story. You at least got a villain in Destiny 2 that has a sense of character, like you understand the villain who is Gaul, uh, the leader of the, the Red Legion of the Cabal. Pretty much, you understand what he's doing, why he's doing it, and then you sense his emotions through it. And I know a lot of story games don't really characterize the villains as much, and that's always something I see that's lacking in a bunch of stories. You need to characterize, as a game developer, you need to be able to characterize the villain in such a way that the player himself understands why he's fighting against that villain. Not just because they're evil, but you want to know why you're doing all of this. You need 
to be, the player needs to be granted a sense of purpose in the game, and Bungie did a really good job with manifesting a story that really gives you a sense of purpose and what and like gives you a sense of why you're doing this, why you're trying to stop Gaul. And I'm trying to not spoil the story, but there is one point where Gaul himself is fighting his own internal mental battle, like mental and emotional battles against his own like leaders of his army, and you can tell that his character is somewhat changing, even though he is still purely evil, you can tell that there is something going on in his mind and his character is somewhat different. He's being characterized in such a way that makes the story interesting and the story itself doesn't really pick up which is uh, until like the middle to near end of the game is when it really begins to pick up which I find is kind of a problem with, with the game. When I play a game, I want to be captivated in the story through the, from A all the way to B. It's gotta, it's gotta be captivating and intriguing throughout the entire story, but the story doesn't really pick up until you get to around the third, like, planet. I think the one after Titan is Nessus, I want to say. Nessus is when the story begins to really pick up and you begin to assemble your fire team back together, or the, the vanguard, you begin to assemble the vanguard back together, and that's when the story really begins to pick up, and that's when the story of Destiny 2 begins to shine, when you get to the very end. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the story. The next thing I got are the enemies. Okay, one thing about the enemies is pretty much, this is the first game in a while that reminds me of Halo, fighting the Covenant. There's so many different races there's so much even though the races are practically the same as destiny 1 since i haven't played destiny 1 i'm experiencing destiny 2 for the first time the enemies are absolutely amazing the different variety they give you you got you got the cabal you got the fallen you got the taken you got the neck you got the the vex and then i'm i feel like i'm missing one you got the cabal the vex the fallen uh, the Taken, and I'm missing one. Oh, the Hive, the Thrall, okay, the Thrall, the Knights, the Agonites, yeah, okay, the Acolytes, all of those, the Hive. So, pretty much the enemies in the game are absolutely great. The the way they're all different from each other, one of the cool things, one of the coolest things that I find out, that I found out, was when I was playing the game, going through a mission, and there was an area with a couple different races of enemies, or species of enemies, whatever you call it, and they were fighting each other. The way the world is already laid out in such a dynamic way that the enemies are already fighting each other and then I just hop on board I shoot a couple of cabals I shoot a couple of fallen they start shooting at me they start shooting at each other and it's absolute chaos and I enjoyed the hell out of that and Bungie did a really good job with the way they set up the enemies to fight each other all which didn't really happen in back in Halo when I played the Covenant since the Covenant were a bunch of different species but they all work together and this is a new twist that I haven't really seen in many other games so I commend Bungie for that. Now, although the game itself is really good, I give Destiny about a nine and a half, a nine to a nine and a half. It's not a perfect game. There are a lot of things with the game that I find are kind of meh. There's a couple of issues. For starters, the story has a couple of plot holes throughout it, and you begin to wonder, I'm trying to not spoil this, but there's certain times in the story where I really wonder, it's like, hey, that, that really shouldn't work. There's some times where I'm like, okay, that doesn't really make any sense, but it's a game, I get it, it's gotta happen. Pretty much, uh, uh, it's hard to explain without really spoiling the story, which I don't want to do. Another thing are the recharge timers. Now I know this also gets into the PvP aspect. I'm gonna just talk about the recharge timers and my issue with them. I feel like your abilities and your super don't really recharge in enough time. There are a lot of points throughout the game where I'm just trying to get my super to come up, but it's not. Like it takes a long time to get all your abilities back. There are points in missions where I just don't even bother using my healing rift because I feel like I'll be wasting it in a certain battle. I'll be wondering, hey, what if a boss battle is about to come up in like 30 seconds and I won't have my healing rift when I would need it. So there are a lot of missions where I just go through the fight without using any of my abilities except my melee and grenade. And your healing rift is very important. And I, this, this habit itself began, like, began to going into PvP for me. And I begin to like not use my healing rift as much as I used to because I wonder, hey, maybe I might need it for a battle that I might have 30 seconds later. So I would rather not waste it now in case I lose this, lose this fight. Which is not a feeling you're supposed to have as an all-powerful guardian with the power of the light and all these abilities that you have. So that's one issue, and I know all people have already addressed the recharge.
recharge times and how Bungie has to sort of fix that and I hope Bungie will but so far Bungie has done an amazing job with this game. I commend them for their efforts, all their creativity they put in this game and I know they continuously fix the game, improve the game. There will be a bunch of patches, a bunch of nerfs, a bunch of buffs. I know a couple of weapons have to be nerfed to meet on meet a multi-tool, to meet a mini tool. I'm not going to get into that but there are a couple issues with that which I'm not going to get into but there I know Bungie will keep adding. There's a cliffhanger at the end of the story which I won't get into but I feel like that's going to be something that leads into the next expansion pack which I'm thoroughly excited for. I'm really excited to see how Bungie's going to take this game into year, into the end of year one, into year two, year three and so on however long they want to keep this game going. I'm thoroughly excited. I feel like Destiny 2 is one of the best games that came out this fall or is going to be one of the best games that come out this fall and pretty much I'm absolutely hyped to play this game. I almost have 48 hours into this game and I have not played a game that much in about a week and a half. The game's only been out for a week and a half and I have 48 hours, which I know people have way more time, but I have not played a game for that long in that short amount of time in like ever. Maybe back in my Pokemon days I played that much. And that shows how much I really like Destiny 2. And that's pretty much all I have as a review for this game. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed this review. And I made sure not to spoil anything. So I hope you're happy that I didn't spoil anything. Kept true to my word not to spoil the story. And if you enjoyed this, leave a like. And if you want to see some more of my videos, subscribe. I'll be putting out more content soon. Some more Destiny PvP will be coming out soon. I have a couple of tips videos that are going to come out. Uh, I have a couple of Let's Plays planned in the future. So if you're excited to see more, make sure to subscribe, make sure to comment what you thought of the Destiny 2 story, and if you liked it, you didn't enjoy it, what do you think Destiny can do, what do you think Bungie can do to improve Destiny 2 in the future months to come, in the future years to come. That's pretty much all I had to say guys, hope you all have a fabulous rest of your day, and I'll see you all later.